Hello, this is Tim, and today I'm going to be teaching a basic color correction tutorial using the free software GIMP. So to begin, I have my photo loaded, and you'll notice right away that this photo is pretty gray, pretty bland, and that's because I'm using the CineStyle uh, free pro color profile for your Canon DSLR. And that just gives you a very flat image that then gives you more dynamic range to work with in post. So to start, I'm going to duplicate my photo, right click, uh, where is it? Duplicate layer. And that's just so you can always have a copy to come back to if need be. So we'll hide that first, that first one. Now we'll click on the copy, we'll go to colors, levels, and this is where you get rid of that grayness in the photo. So we'll take our blacks and match it up to the start of the uh, histogram. And same with the whites. Okay, and now you can also edit these settings as curves by the individual channels. So I'm going to try to pull out the reds and the purples of clouds by bumping up the reds a little bit and then removing both the green and a little bit of the blue, like that. So you can see preview, that is with it on, that is with it off, quite a big difference already. Now I'm gonna to go to colors and brightness and contrast. I'm gonna take up the contrast just one or two levels. Just pulls the colors out, makes them pop a little bit more. All right, now we are going to do the bulk of our color correcting work. I'm going to go colors, color balance, and this is where you can change the highlights, the shadows, the midtones, and how each, how all the colors are expressed in those levels. So I'm going to start off with the highlights, and I'm going to add a little red, take, add a little magenta maybe just a tiny bit of blue bring it to five next is the midtones again add a little red add a little magenta maybe just a tad bit of blue again and i'm pretty much going to leave the shadows alone because as you can see that the shadows aren't very important to this shot so i'm just going to add a little red to it maybe five and as you can see the grass down there on the bottom is is nicely colored now so I will preview it again, that is with, and that is without. Again, quite a dramatic difference between the two. Next, I'm going to adjust the saturation of the individual colors. So colors, hue and saturation. And I'm going to take up the red saturation by about 10. Same with magenta. and. That looks pretty good. Maybe add a little of the master. But that's actually a little too saturated, so I'm, I'm going to bring it back down to zero. Preview. It might be a little subtle, but there is certainly a difference in the vibrance of the colors. Next, I'm going to sharpen the image since it was shot on a DSLR using that CineStyle uh, color profile. The image is pretty. Uh, not sharp, if that's the right wording. So I'm going to go up to filters, enhance, unsharpen mask. Seems contrary to what you would think, but yes, that is how you sharpen an image. So we'll find our point of interest in the little preview. Right about there. I usually like to take the radius down just a little bit, around 3.5, and then amount. It'll vary in, in between photos, but using that uh, color profile, around 90 looks pretty good. Preview, much, much better, much more sharp. Then we'll hit OK. Let it render down on the bottom. As you can see, the monorail is now much more in focus and more sharp. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to use a filter that 
denoises the image. And this I got on the GIMP uh, forum page for all the different plugins. Obviously, it's free to download and it's pretty good. So, filters, enhance, wave with denoise, that's what it's called. Just look it up, you'll find it pretty easily. Again, we'll find our area of interest. I'm going to look on the grass down at the bottom because that's where you can see the most. Preview channel, I'm going to turn on all the colors. And this doesn't have to be too much, but around 500 works. Maybe a little bit more, 700. You don't want to do it too high because I'll, I'll show you. If you turn it up, you just get an image that's uh, pretty yucky. So bring it back down to about 700. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Preview, that's what it was before. And that is with the enhancement. Hit OK. We're going to let that render out again. All right, now it's time to crop the photo. So we're going to go over into our toolbox here and the rectangle select tool, drag out onto the screen. Now, following the rule of thirds, I'm going to try to put this horizon here in that upper third of the photo. Bring that down a little bit more, bring that over. That looks pretty good. Again, it's up to your discretion to uh, decide how you want to crop it, but generally the rule of thirds makes a photo look better. So then I'm going to go to Image, Crop to Selection, and now you have a cropped photo. Next, I usually like to resize my photos, so we're going to go Image, Scale Image, for Facebook photos, I usually go 3,500 pixels, and that, that seems to work pretty well. Scale. Good. All right, now that the photo is resized and color corrected, I'm going to finalize it by adding a watermark. This is just, since it's on the internet, anything can be taken off the internet nowadays, so it's good just to have a watermark of your photos. So file, open as layers, and I'm going to find my watermark. As you can see, it brings it in as a new layer on top of everything. This just makes it easier to work with. All right, now that I've brought in my watermark, I'm gonna make sure that layer is selected. Since it's so big, I will need to scale down just that layer individually. So right click on the layer itself and hit scale layer. Uh, you, I like to do about 500 pixels wide. That looks pretty good. If not, you can always, again, right-click, scale layer. I'm actually going to bring it down to 400. That looks better. Making sure the layer is selected, we can move it down into the corner. All right, that seems to be pretty good. Uh, to do a final export, you can go to File, Export, save it as all different kinds of files. I usually like to do a PNG file because it, it offers the most quality for the file size. And it can be read by Facebook too, so you, you're set in that department. And then just hit export and you will have a finalized image. So thanks for watching guys. I hope this helped you a little bit. Uh, when I first started out color correcting, I had no idea what I was doing, so hopefully this should give you a little bit of an idea on how to do it correctly. So thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more.